Pradyumna Vyas, Senior Advisor of Confederation of Indian Industry, Board Member of World Design Organization and the former Director of National Institute of Design. I welcome you all to the session of Design Talk Series organized by Confederation of Indian Industry in collaboration with World Design Organization and Manipal University, Jaipur. The Design Talk Series has been conceptualized to sensitize the Indian stakeholders on design and its impact on socio-economic growth and excellence. As part of the series, global stalwarts share their journey and experience with the audience to learn and gain insights from them. I am happy to state that CI has been orchestrating various initiatives demonstrating the vital role of design in making businesses more competitive and public services more effective. We are pleased to have World Design Organization's partnership for this initiative. WDO, as you all know, is an organization with global footprint advocating, promoting, and sharing knowledge of industrial design-driven innovation that has the power to create a better world. Our supporting partner, Manipal University, Jaipur, is one of the leading education institutions which aims foster creativity and innovation for an intellectually satisfying learning environment. With this, now I would like to invite Professor Pradyumna Vyas, Senior Career's Senior Advisor to Confederation of Industry, carrying for more than 37 years of experience, and he is also the board member of a World Design Organization and the former director of National Institute of Design in, from past. Now, I would now request Professor Vyas to give his welcome address, please. Thank you. Thank you, Nitish, for your uh, introduction. Senior advisor. So, Dr. Madhura Yadav, thank you very much for uh, uh, hosting this uh, design talk series. And for uh, Ugo and uh, Sebastian, I just want to give a little backdrop that uh, NSNCO is uh, my colleague in World Design Organization. And uh, we were all the time talking about that you see you are, I was there by the way in your office uh, in uh, June when, when we had World Design Organization board meeting. And we did discuss that we would like to have uh, what all uh, DESOF is doing in the space of uh, design and also in technology and other areas. And it will be nice if suppose uh, your representative talk to faculty, students, and other professionals in India. So as technology is moving so fast, uh, we always feel that uh, this, especially the digital technology space is doing a lot of wonders. Especially when I was there in uh, Paris, I saw the work which you are carrying out in virtual models of the aircrafts and automobiles and other things. So students are going to learn a lot from your presentation and also it will become some kind of networking for the future also to know that how technology is really getting uh, uh, in uh, with design and design is not only just trying to give, give a form but much more than that and integrating the total system thinking. I also take this opportunity for all the participants that you must be thinking why CII is getting involved in such kind of thing. The, the basic agenda for us is the design promotion and design awareness in the country. And we uh, as CII body have uh, 120 years of spending and design vertical is almost like 23 year old, which, which is uh, working very closely with the government, with the industry, with academia, and see that how we can take design to the next level. So uh, to, to, to bring uh, on this particular platform for institutions and for the students specifically, we have Young Designer Award. In fact, we will be uh, uh, giving this award on uh, 1st of uh, December this year. It will be a virtual thing. And uh, also for the professionals, uh, we have the uh, Design Excellence Award. If anybody is doing excellent work, they can really put in. We also have... Um, uh, actually, the uh, I design program where we are giving strategic design inputs like these lectures, which we are giving there, the regular program go on for 10 months every Saturday for three hours. So faculty can participate and professionals can participate and know more about the global design perspective, actually, that how this global design activities are happening. And we, we know that where we stand and how we can really network 
And uh, the main thing which I would like to tell and invite each and every one of uh, including Sebastian and Hugo for the design summit, which is happening on 30th of November and uh, uh, 1st of uh, December on virtual platform. And you'll find that a lot of uh, international WDO members, president, and other dignitaries are going to talk about it and the uh, award will also be given. So you would know what all is happening around. So uh, it's registration, we all, uh, Nitish uh, will circulate the details. And I would like you to uh, really uh, see that how we are taking forward the design agenda in the country with these uh, conferences. And uh, once you attend this, obviously, uh, you would see the nuances of design. And uh, I tell you that we have very distinguished speakers today, Sebastian and Hugo, and we are really going to get a lot of insights from there. So thank you, Dr. Madhura Yadav, again for hosting this. And uh, I hand over the the stage to our experts. Over to you, Nitish. Please go thank ahead. You, thank you so much, uh, Professor Vyas, to set the context. Um, now I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our key speakers for today's session. Mr. Ugo Barbalata. Mr. Ugo Barbalata is a presently CACIA Design Senior Expert at Dissolve Systems Company for their V plus R product experience offering. All related products linked to realistic visualization experience and immersive solutions. He did six years as services into PSA and Toyota for digital perceived quality and virtual mockup. He now works with companies that need to deploy physical based renderings, reproduce the customer experience and connect immersive hardware to their virtual mode. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker. Mr. Sebastian Smirtrins is presently the senior design manager and in charge of experience design research and relations with design schools. Before joining Dassault Systems, Sir Sebastian mainly worked in the automotive sector as a design consultant for ICEM Limited and interaction and product designer at Siemens Automotive. Dr. Madhura Yadav is a professor and a dean in faculty of design at Manipal University, Jaipur. She is an architect planner with over 25 years of experience. She is founder, head of the School of Architecture and Design, and now director of SA and D at Manipal University, Jaipur. She is one of the founder member in establishing Faculty of Design at Manipal University, Jaipur, and founder head for fashion design, interior design, and planning programs. She is on several expert groups and is a jury of various architectural competitions. She is also on editorial board architecture, urban design, and urban planning India journals. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Madhura Yadav to initiate the conversation with Mr. Ugo Barbalata and Mr. Sebastian Smithens. Over to you, Dr. Madhura Yadav. Yeah, thank you, Nitish. And uh, I welcome all the participants for this uh, design talk series on role of AR and VR on in design education. So I invite uh, Mr. Sebastian and Mr. Ugo for this uh, discussion. And to start with, I will just like to say that uh, as uh, Professor Vass said that design education is uh, challenging nowadays and because of technology, we have lots of opportunities. And I think uh, AR and VR is the future of design education and which will have the many possibilities for the students and faculty as well. So to start with, I'll just uh, put a first question to any one of you, both of you can address also. So what is the definition of design according to you? And is the design a method to create preferable futures? Uh, so thank you for the introduction uh, to all of you. Uh, and I'm glad to, to speak with you about this uh, really um, interesting and uh, ins inspiring uh, domain, which is the, the design in general. Uh, for, for me, the, the definition of design is, is, is sort of a personal definition, in fact, but uh, I would say that uh, that is create, modify a product or services and to make the, the lives of users, customers, patients, users, citizens um, easier pleasant and human and human uh, mainly in fact so uh, 
and especially in our global context, we, we know that uh, to be more human in our, uh, in our relationships, uh, in our purpose, in, in fact, it's, it's really, uh, it's really uh, key, in fact. Um, so that's, that's really my, my vision of the design, but um, just to come back on what I do here at the system design studio. So it's uh, an integrated innovation uh, by design departments for the system and it was, it's for, for its clients. So um, that was just uh, interesting for, for me to, to, to contextualize uh, what, what I'm saying also around the design um, with my uh, current um, activity. Um, for me, definitely, the, the design is a, is a method to create uh, preferable futures. And I would say that um, it's even more a mind spirit than a method, in fact. Uh, propose and illustrate a vision uh, that could make life better implies an approach, in fact, uh, a spirit, and mainly based on uh, empathy, in fact. Um, and, and today, I would say that that's crucial to have this, um, this point of view. The spirit uh, design has to play um, its role of catalyst and booster to propose uh, products, services, uh, transformations of organization, also uh, new experiences uh, that will help people uh, in their daily life, and not and not by creating beautiful but unuseful products and services. And, uh, and I'm a, a bit a bit critic, in fact, on, on the last uh, <laughs> the last point of this definition of design. But I think the, the design uh, came up with with this approach, in fact, to more aesthetical than functional. In fact, it depends, of course, of the different uh, different streams uh, uh, around the history of design. But uh, it's really important now to to focus. On the, on the experience, on the real purpose, we, we have to, 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 to propose, to, to develop uh, with, with, uh, with the design uh, methodology. So um, that's, yeah, that's globally my, my vision of the design and, and, what, and why I consider the design as a, a good mean to, uh, to create a preferable uh, futures, of course. Okay. Thank you, uh, Sebastian. And I think uh, you have rightly said that uh, this empathy is a very important word for design. Mm -hmm. And we create futures as a designer and then make life better. That is an important part of design. Uh, Mr. Ubo, would you like to opine on this or should we go to the next question? Well, you can go to the next. I think uh, Sebastian okay. is a, the right person and he said everything on that. Okay. So can you throw some light that, uh, as he rightly said, that in design, we see empathy and spirit also. So how design can be catalyst for social change? Um, for the social, social change, in fact, um, you, you mean, uh, um, in fact, social change, in fact, by design around the empathy is of course, it's the it's, it's the it's at the core of the design methodology. So, social change uh, mean that um, that mean we need to to go um, turn a bit around the uh, um, around the, the more the, uh, around the organizations uh, or around the way uh, the way uh, the people uh, uh, think and uh, and act uh, and consider that the design. Uh, is the way to uh, to think with the um, with the, the eyes of the, the person of the of the user you want to propose a, a new solution. So, of course, I think um, uh, we need to shift from the industrial uh, domain uh, toward the, the social one. I mean, the, the society, the people, the community, uh, and maybe also to dis distillate, in fact, uh, this methodology. Um, of course, on, on the individual side, but on, around the group, the community, the society itself, uh, itself. and um, in, in, in I think it's maybe also um, a matter of um, uh, decision from the government also to, uh, to, to, 
to, to give the access to this methodology, but also to consider that could be instrumental uh, in, in, in this type of organization. So um, I think that's, yeah, that's totally related to the, to the previous question. In fact, is, uh, is, is, uh, is to think about uh, the, the way we could also uh, transform not only the industry uh, and the way we, we sell a product uh, and, and services with uh, all the, 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 the assets the design uh, can provide around desi desirability, uh, attractivity, uh, viability also, in fact. Uh, but also on, on focusing on the real, uh, the real needs of, of human. And it's not only around product and, and services also, or services, of course, but not only product. Yes, I think uh, by having this inno innovative solutions, we can solve any of the society's issues. And this way design can help to act as a catalyst for social change. So there are many exa examples from any field like, uh, let it be a fashion design or a product design or the graphic design or uh, architecture for that matter, or a city also. So if, if you give the innovative solutions to the society, the issues are solved. So in that way, I think design can act as a social a catalyst for social change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. the next question is to Mr. Ugo. Why do certain nations traditionally perform better and how they perceive and integrate design in their lives? In your opinion, how can India be a leader in design, design innovation? Yes, I think this question is, is maybe more for, for me. Okay, yeah, okay you can. yes, Mr. Sebastian. me, you go. I think it's really interesting to, to come back on the history, in fact, uh, of the design. And uh, just to, to answer to the first part of the question, I think that if we, if we just come back on the history, uh, the, the design comes from Europe and then the United States, mainly, in fact, uh, where the, the design has been uh, institutionalized uh, through different streams, you, you of course know. Uh, that were also linked to the, the industrial developments of these countries, um, and and for me it's 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 just a, a question of maturity. In fact, so so th there is no reason for for the other countries um, to implement massively the, the design in their organization uh, from the industry to the administration and to of course um, uh, to of course. Uh, I mean, uh, have an impact on this social change. In fact, we just spoke about pre previously. So um, I think India just needs to, to continue to the, the structuring of the Indian design uh, through uh, different institutions, schools, um, uh, it's, uh, all organism of promotions, uh, and, and demonstrate the value of design on, on the different domains that, uh, that could be uh, uh, impacted by the design and show, of course, the, the result through this all this organization. So, um, uh, yes, I, I think it's one of the way, and that's one of uh, the, 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 the way uh, the, the, the different Westerns, uh, Western countries uh, promote uh, the design, in fact, through institutions, through the different uh, uh, um, curriculum in the design schools and the result and the, and the impact in the, in the industrial uh, domain. And, and I think there is also two opportunities uh, behind that. Uh, the, first, the first one is, I think, the maker movement. Um, as the design is the association of, uh, of thinking and making, it's, it's, uh, it is a way to pragmatically solve problem by thinking and quickly uh, propose new ideas by testing, uh, prototyping uh, them, in fact, really quickly. So, and, and I think India has already this spirit and could be much more developed uh, in, 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 the, in the future. So, and the second opportunity for me is the, is the, is the system uh, thinking, in fact, uh, in, in, in this complex world where we, we live in, uh, where issues uh, have to be solved and, and really strong issues have to be solved. I think the systemic uh, approach of design uh, is, a, is a good method to, uh, to think uh, globally 
the experience and not only the product or, or the services. So I think we need to think also globally and to think globally and of course to, to, uh, to pick all the details of this complexity, the, the systemic approach um, uh, of design is, is really uh, is really important, is really fundamental and it's totally linked to another uh, uh, domain of expertise uh, from the engineering called the, the system engineering and, and, and prove that it's totally connected. In fact, the way we think as a, as a designer with the design thinking uh, methodologies is totally linked to the to the, the, the system thinking and the system engineering methods. So it's really also really interesting to to embark all this complexity uh, with designers, engineers, uh, um, um, different managers, and uh, in, from marketing, from uh, uh, human resources, to to to, to create this um, this uh, this global change also uh, in the different organizations where the the, the design uh, could be uh, applied. Yes, I think, as you said rightly, that there is an increasing complexity and that has made design education more challenging. But in the process of development, this design extended into various disciplines like architecture, planning, fashion, textiles, graphic, then visual communications, fine arts, architecture, uh, sorry, interiors, multimedia and jewelry. But, but all these design disciplines have design principles in common in them, but attribute changes as per the discipline. So mm -hmm. if we talk about design education in India, it has developed over the years, but now it is booming. And as per the rep uh, report of UK India, British Council, only a fifth of design market has been tapped. And there is a lot of scope for design institutions and to, and all the design institutions to, should take these challenges to prepare such professionals. So uh, now we will go to the design as a profession, as a broader area. And the question is that, how has design as a profession evolved in the last two decades? Can you share your experience to illustrate this change? Uh, what, what is also, uh, in fact, a bit funny, if I'm not really funny, but it's, what, what, what is interesting for me is that 20 years, in fact, um, that corresponds globally to my work experience. So um, uh, I have a design degree from uh, Institut Superior of Design uh, Rubica, in fact, uh, from France, which is uh, also linked to, to India, I think, uh, in, in Pune, I think. Um, and uh, so 20 years, it's globally my work experience. And, uh, and, I, and I saw the design evolution mainly through, through uh, two dimensions. In fact, um, on one hand, the 3D capabilities, uh, which allowed the, the designer to support his creativity and even augment it um, with, with, for instance, uh, gen generative design, real-time experience, uh, in R and VR, of course, mm -hmm. and and what is really the difference uh, um, compared to 20 years uh, in the past? In fact, um, the 3D capabilities at, at this time uh, were, of course, um, already available, but uh, what was a bit, fin, were still a bit restrictive, in fact, uh, around the creativity, and it's not the case anymore. In fact, I, I, I want to say that, fin, in fact. The, the restrictive, uh, the restrictive uh, aspect was, in fact, the designer is of course creative. He has, a, he has an idea and he wants to to create something to um, and to to reveal it, and not only by by the, the sketches, two uh, D sketches, but also with three uh, D capabilities. And at this time, that was still a bit restrictive, in fact, and and now it is not the case anymore. Uh, there is plenty of capabilities, and, and we will illustrate uh, a bit later. What is possible now to do in the design domain, uh, thanks to uh, to three D capabilities. So now it's really a booster. It's a, a way to augment your your creativity, uh, and, and we need to take and we have to uh, we have to to, to take uh, benefit of, of that, of course. And and the other end is um, the experience design. In fact, for for me, 
that's also the evolution of the design. Uh, that's the way we think about the design. It's not only product design, transportation design, or uh, uh, luxury design, or space design. Uh, it's, it's globally um, the way we have to think about the, the design as an experience. And of course, with the systemic approach, uh, I spoke about just a bit uh, uh, before, to think globally about the experience uh, we propose to the user and combine different design um, expertise, uh, such as user experience, product design, service design, and, and also with the extended capabilities of prototyping. And I want, what I want to say behind this extended capabilities of prototyping is the way we can now prototype an experience as we, we prototype a product. Um, in the way that, of course, with the different cap capabilities, you can prototype your product really in detail, but it is a bit difficult to consider what, what will be the, the different interaction this product uh, uh, will, will, have, uh, will have with the user and, uh, and what, what is the ecosystem uh, around this product. And that's really the purpose of the experience design. To, embark all the, 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 the story, I would say, uh, around the product, around the services you want to, to, to propose, to, to develop. Um, and and uh, with the experience design, we, are, we have now, with the system, uh, the systemic approach uh, to think about the, 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 the complexity of all the, 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 the purpose, and, but also, um, also to prototype it as you, 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 can, you can do uh, on, a, on a product uh, directly with uh, a 3D, uh, 3D uh, capabilities. So uh, I think yes, there is globally two, two um, big uh, changes uh, in, in the way the design uh, has, has evolved. Yes, as you rightly said, I think speed has become a way of life. And we need to concentrate more on speed, technology, quality, and cost to add, uh, to have better designs, futuristic designs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think also just to, to add, just, excuse me, just to add uh, one more words, in fact, um, uh, I think now it's exactly the, the, the way you, you pointed out uh, through the, the previous questions, uh, I think, the, the design has also to be really impactful in the social change. So we are also to, to think about the way the design will be uh, used in other organizations and not only the industry, not only uh, in fact the, 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 the different uh, uh, organizations where the design is, uh, is already deployed, but also in other organizations. I think uh, it could be really uh, good for the future with this human-centric approach and not only focused on, on business and the way to, uh, to create a value, I mean, uh, money. Yes. It's really important. Yeah. Uh, next question is, uh, design is now at the age of technology and sciences. So how, how has attributes and skill set expectations from a designer changed? And do we have to gear up to serving newer profiles? Uh, I think, as, as we said a bit previously, in fact, we can see the designer as a, as a catalyst, in fact, hein, as a sort of conductor or film director, um, who has the abilities to federate people with this transverse, transversal approach and user-centric methods. So the idea for me is to allow him or her of course, to collaborate more and more with other expertise by creating a dedicated environment of work uh, with management schools, with engineering schools. Um, I think it's, yeah, it seems for me essential for, um, to, 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 um, to operate and to enable this, uh, this, this new way to work. And, and I think the designer has a, has a, has a great role to, to play uh, uh, within this, uh, this, this, this game, I think. And, uh, and of course, it has also already started. Uh, we, see, uh, we see many uh, collaboration between engineering schools, management schools, and design schools uh, here in, uh, in Europe. And I think it's probably the case um, um, in, our, in other, uh, other continents. But um, uh, 
I think yeah, the, 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 there is yes, the, this uh, this way to to see the designer uh, today, but also in the, in the in the future. So we need to develop this disabilities around the the designers. And, and I think that also CAD softwares uh, will give more and more capabilities to the designers um, to validate their ideas earlier in the process uh, with all the simulations, optimizations, uh, tools, uh, of course, the creative and creation tools, of course. But I think with these new uh, capabilities, it gives the ability to the designer to, uh, to quickly um, validate uh, um, his ideas um, and, and, uh, and to be more uh, agile, in fact, uh, towards the, 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 the global process of development for a product or, or service. So the designer has to seize this opportunity to, um, by, by uh, I mean, uh, knowing all these new capabilities from, uh, from, from the software industry. Uh, and, 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 and I think we have also to, uh, we should also awaken design uh, students uh, on sociological um, and environmental uh, issues. I think I'm really uh, sensitive on, on these topics, but uh, I think it, it will be for key for the future also. That's, I think the design schools has also to, uh, to improve, to, uh, to show uh, what, what is uh, what is happening uh, on, on the different on these different um, issues? I mean, uh, uh, sociologically and uh, environmentally uh, speaking, uh, and, and I think it's yes, it's really important for the future and also for to, for the way the design has to also to, to evolve, to be really conscious and mm -hmm. how the design methodology could uh, answer to this to these issues. Yes, I think as you rightly pointed out. This interdisciplinary approach is required in the design because as the pace in global economy increases and the clients move away from multiple source providers and seek out a single source and turnkey, turnkey providers. So to bridge the distance between these disciplines, it is time to review its uh, instructional pedagogy and the inherent value to understanding and exploring related disciplines. So interdisciplinary approach is required and it is vital in design education, I think. So we have to move from uh, inter uh, the concept of interdependence rather than independ uh, independence. That is the need of the hour today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we can go to the third part of discussion that is design and 3D work environments. So how 3D environments can play a big role in building design community for students in design? Yeah, um, I think, yes, as I said previously, I think to, to really answer to, to these to this issues, in fact, uh, to the issues we have to face now, I think working collaboratively is, is uh, the other design domains, but also the other uh, domains of expertise is key. So as I said, so, so work on this type of work on environments will provide collaboration, upstream thinking and creation tools are very good, in fact, uh, means to, to achieve this, uh, this, this goal. So I think, yes, we, we, they, they, they will play and they already uh, play a, a big role, but more and more they will play a, a, a wider role uh, in, in building design communities for, for students in design, but on, not only on students. And I think we have to also to open the doors and, and think about our own expertise, the design, but also how to work really, um, uh, really, uh, um, I would say, uh, really deeply, in fact, with other uh, expertise, uh, with uh, other domains. And I think this, this type of 3D environment, collaborative environments are, are really good in, and, and I would say maybe, hey, uh, fundamental uh, fundamental way to, to work collaboratively. I think it's one of the key assets of the, the digital uh, solutions is to create this collaboration. But we, we saw that, of course, during the pandemic. In fact, uh, the pandemic, we, 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 we have uh, performed, we, we still uh, maintain our activity thanks also to, to this type of uh, technologies, in fact, to this type of uh, environmental work. 
and even in the industry uh, uh, to create this, uh, this this link to this uh, with all, all the people uh, to achieve the same goal the, the, the digital uh, environment are, are very important and, uh, of course the free environment as uh, the SO system is providing uh, are, are very important so what kind of uh, solutions you are providing in this domain from your office as uh, the salt systems in fact the, um, the, the SO system provides uh, Globally, uh, the, the system uh, through the, the free experience platform provides a collaborative environment that, that offers to, to, to the users uh, all the capabilities to cover all the design process. If we just focus on the design process, of course, because there is also other domains uh, uh, of expertise that, that, has, uh, that are covered by the, the free experience platform, but if we just focus on the design process. so. The, 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 this type of, um, of uh, work uh, environment, the 3D experience platform, cover all the design process. So what, what I can uh, what I can do is to show you uh, in live <laughs> uh, a project we, we we did uh, we did on the on the 3D experience platform. And what is interesting is we we did this project uh, during the pandemic, in, in totally remotely. With um, another design agency, so uh, Elium Studio, uh, located in, in Paris, uh, which is well, well known, uh, and uh, an industrial startup also called uh, Mondao, and uh, in the design hub from uh, Paris Saclay University. So we create this small uh, community, in fact, on the Fredix Men's platform. So let, let me show you what, what, is, uh, what is behind this. Uh, so I think now you see my my screen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so here you are on the 3D experience platform. We are uh, on what we call the 3D dashboard. It's a it's a it's a place where you can uh, you can uh, uh, present all the, the assets uh, you are you are creating you are sharing uh, and it's a great to a good way to organize globally all your design uh, data if you just consider that you are working on a design project um, you see here through the interface you have the access through uh, so at the um, the left uh, upper corner there you have the compass it's a way to to uh, to, to to access to all the, the solutions uh, you, you can access uh, to so through the, the notions of roles so roles of designers in fact or maybe different uh, um, uh, different domains uh, around the design uh, different specialties um, and, and uh, so through the, this dashboard and the community, so you are able through this dashboard to integrate different solutions, of course, in fact, so uh, and that's the case also for the, 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 the community, so 3D Swim uh, solutions. And there you are able to create a community, so a group of people uh, who will work on a, on a specific topic. And it's a way to to of course to share insights references uh, to talk just discuss about uh, the, the topic of the project you want to uh, you want to, to work on and uh, and create this this uh, global environment of work uh, so there it's the community so where we, we speak about the, the project and and just i forgot to mention the, the project so during the pandemic we work on the, on the on the face max face mask project so for, for the pandemic so uh, we, we, we wanted to to just to answer to the, to this also to this issue to provide a, a good way to to secure uh, the, the people with a, a face mask um, uh, towards the, the, the um, to the so against the, the, the virus the COVID, the COVID COVID virus of course and, and so here are the partners so the different partners so Edgar uh, Mondao and the, the University of Paris Saclay. Um, uh, design hub, and we started to to expose to to introduce, in fact, the the the, the, the context of work. So what what were what was the landscape around this uh, this this, uh, this product, in fact, uh, for the competition benchmark also, uh, and to create, of course, the design brief, 
And there is different solutions uh, on this uh, uh, through the, 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 the communities and 3D swim capability is to, um, to, uh, to manage the, the innovation in a way. So, uh, uh, you, you can provide different ideas and, and, um, and validate the maturity and uh, the interest of these ideas for different types of solutions. I, I, won't, I won't go deep, uh, too deeper uh, in this uh, in, uh, in, in the details, but uh, yes. Yeah. So, and there, progressively, we proposed um, different. Uh, excuse me. Maybe I'm just. Uh, yeah. Just an issue. I can't click uh, if I share my screen. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, difficult. Um, and we, we share so uh, different ideas, different concepts. So we created in 3D, but also in 2D, uh, traditionally, I would say. And we share all this, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, asset, this data. So uh, there are 2D data, but also uh, 3D data. And of course, through the different uh, solutions, 3D solutions of creation of the platform. We were able to to, um, to 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 show really quickly uh, first uh, first ideas. Um, so to uh, physical prototyping, so I'm not able to click on it. I think it's just an issue of um, screen sharing. So yeah. So so the, the idea was not to to go into to to deep in, uh, in detail, but. Uh, to go at the end, of course, on, on the first proposal through 3D, and of course, uh, with physical prototype, uh, thanks to 3D print uh, capabilities, to, to, um, to achieve, in fact, to, uh, to um, an interesting uh, level of uh, answer with, uh, with, this, uh, with this concept. So just to show that, in fact, we can cover from just the first ideas to the first uh, 3D prototype, and even, even uh, even further, in fact, in the in the process of development, so in, in even the, the manufacturing and the tooling also um, with the free expense platform. So yeah, it was just a, a quick a, a quick uh, glimpse <laughs> on the on the free expense platform with um, uh, on the design process. Great, and I think I we should move to the very important part of our discussion today, that is a role of AR and VR. So can you uh, relate uh, some incident incidents where students can become AR and VR expert or can they learn through engagement activities? Mm -hmm. um, that's something I can uh, offer some answer. So from the start, um, I know that a lot of companies, especially when they have um, a senior designer or people with old um, design thinking, who don't manipulate uh, augmented reality or virtual reality tools or solutions. So from the start, um, if those company is willing to, um, company or design uh, organization is willing to evolve, this is where you can act, where you can come and offer your new way of working, showing new tools, uh, showing new process. This is where you can enhance uh, the activities that those people is having today, showing that you can uh, offer something new for them, for their customer, for the change of um, products you want to design or services. Uh, it, it's first, it's a one way uh, you can um, you can push uh, this uh, AR and VR stuff. Uh, indeed, of course. Then there's uh, another way if you design uh, if you work with a company who have already uh, augmented reality or VR tools but maybe they have a way to use it because the solutions is telling you that you are using this way by pushing this button using these features so if the software or the hardware because it's really both um, connected uh, box together if you were told to use this way because this is the way the solution is running. This is the way the hardware um, is allowing you to do something uh, in a virtual uh, environment or in an immersive environment. If you follow the way it was told you to use it, I have to say that you maybe you will not um, design perfectly as you want. Maybe you will be frustrated because you will discover that in one way you are using the tools or the solutions or the hardware, you will not 
you will not go where you want when you design. Something interesting is um, to find a way to break um, this wall and just to, to map your design process into the solutions VR or AR you will use. It could be also one way uh, to, to progress. If you strictly follow what, uh, what you can do as a features, um, the user interface that is provided with um, a net set, for example, or with a, a solutions providing a realistic appearance of, uh, of your model, it could be limited and maybe you will just stop not fully stop using the solutions but maybe you will say okay i cannot do it this way it's it's not allowing me to accomplish my design um so in that case maybe you will switch off solutions maybe you will stop you will not go uh, as far as you want when you design uh, something right i think uh, ar and vr are very important and uh has potential in visualizing and interacting abstract model into the three dimensional context for to facilitate the learning and this also provides the natural and interactive ways to express our ideas and overcome the techni technical gap in the iterative process design process like for example by upgrading from this traditional computer aided design process to the mixed reality aided design space yeah yeah yeah. So, uh, how AR and VR can help students to be a more innovative and creative? And what would be your advice and tips to the students to be more creative and to have more strategic approach while design research is in the process for the students in India and abroad as well? Um, I'm not myself a designer. Let's say I'm I'm providing solutions to enhance um, design thinking and way to create products. So I know that the traditional I know my old perception was that uh, to do design it was to sketch first on on papers to create two D lines, try to create some um, um, object with a three D appearance, but into into papers. And now what we uh, offer not only us uh, the so system, but is to stop to start from um, a papers from a 2d sketch and start straight to make it with uh, our solutions even if it, it's in 2d or 3d into um, a cat solutions a modeling solutions first creating in 3d maybe it will accelerate and uh, you will maybe not do mistake by converting your 2d um, 2d drawings into a 3d way to create um, your, your ideas that's the first thing and then if on top of that you had realistic so virtual reality i mean uh, adding a realistic surrounding realistic materials then you will start to design to sketch 3d objects or 3d surface with a specific materials, with a specific lightning. And so from the start, maybe you will discover that this shape have a better look with these lines, for example, because you have applied a nice light onto it. Um, then, uh, so uh, an example which come to my mind when I was uh, working um, for an Asia company, for Toyota, I remember that uh, the designer was creating some nice decoration panel into the car cockpit. What happens, they really draw some nice lines. And when it comes to um, virtual reality, we applied some materials and lighting conditions. What happens, some reflection appears, which was disturbing. So first it was not nice looking with specific materials. And then it was disturbing the user. Um, the, the driver or the passenger, like, oh, this shape is not nice. Uh, can we switch off materials? Yes, but if you apply these materials, um, it will not look as my first sketch. Okay, so in 2D, you draw this, but when it comes to 3D and virtual reality, it's not matching. So it was um, decided to go straight for 3Ds, applying a realistic appearance and take faster some decisions. So basically, uh, as Sebastian was saying, it's, um, it's systemic uh, also in this way for virtual reality, data, materials, and um, qualitations who will check what the designer is doing. And having everything from the start, 
everything linked, you will accelerate your design process. You will maybe go straight to the good shape you want to design. And you will uh, break some wall by uh, creating something, discuss with engineers, discuss with qualiticians. And when all these people are all aligned, what about the final customer? Mm. What he will think? Um, maybe you will raise the perfect product to put on the market, but it maybe will not follow what the customer is really uh, wants to, to purchase, to use as a services or to feel when you will see for the first time the object you, you will draw. Yeah. So I think we can do many permutation combinations and see that what are the challenges. And through yeah. this technology of AR and VR, we can solve these challenges before this product reaches to the society or the users, end yeah. users, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So uh, can you relate through your experience in working AR and VR what are the key aspects of design process amendments that a student designer should be mindful about? Uh, so um, something very important if you want to work with um, VR uh, and, and immersive and especially with on, on experience. Uh, how to express that? Um, even if you use realistic um, virtual reality tools in your process. If you want to express something, you can make a lot of things very nice so from the start. Uh, nice lookings. Uh, even if you design something, uh, you want to, to um, auto name that in English, uh, appealing, an appealing object, something you want straight to purchase, to manipulate because it's, it's looking nice, uh, because of, of the form, because of the materials. There's something really to consider is how you, uh, the product behave close to you and how you will behave with this product. Um, it's not all about how it appears and how you want to, to get it and use it. It's more about how you will use it, how you will enhance uh, um, your day besides the product or besides the experience you want to, to offer. It's, it's really one thing. And uh, when it comes to uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and immersive solutions, um, what it could happen, even if you provide the best design on the market to your customer, it could happen that when you will use the product, it will not fulfill your, um, your needs. Um, it will not make you uh, doing straight what you want, even if it's a nice, uh, nice object. After two or three use, if you test something and you don't purchase at the end, if you feel um, you spend too much money and you don't get so much from this object, what is the sense? Um, I know that a lot of uh, companies I was working on, so we, we, they did nice prod products. We make it realistic uh, with virtual reality. At the end, we go for an immersive experience. So we're wearing a headset and uh, being completely immersed in this 3D world and just to check the design they have made. We found two things that first be uh, behaving this product, experiencing it in VR, at the end, the product was not really achieving what the company was really looking for to put on the market with, a, with such product first. And the second aspect, it was like, and, and so for people connected here, immersive solutions and headsets, even if it's very nice to be immersed, to have a nice headset, a nice experience, it could happen that uh, if you work with organization, with departments, uh, with final customer, some people will be afraid about uh, using such technologies. They will not be um, feel comfortable wearing a headset, for example, and they will more focus on their own uh, experience, maybe some sickness uh, feeling or whatever, and they will not uh, really uh, check the product and the design you put uh, in front of them. So they will not focus on uh, your work. They will more focus on what is happening to me? I'm wearing something. I cannot see my hands. It's very strange. Um, they will not be disappointed by your design. Maybe they will be disappointed by their own experience using augmented reality. So there is a balance 
um, where you have to make sure that the people you will discuss with um, will really focus on the product, the design, and the solutions you want to provide them, and not on their own uh, experience during the review of the product you offer them. Yes, you, as you rightly said that aesthetics is very important, then usability, then the appropriate, appropriate materials. I think yeah. there is a need to develop a virtual reality laboratory for simulation uh, studies, particularly in the field of design, research is needed. And aesthetics is one of the unquantified aspects of design. So the neural networks research is to be undertaken for quantification of this aesthetics and the different design disciplines. And I think uh, information technology is to be utilized as a means of convergence of research and its implementation, interdisciplinary, interlaboratory, uh, collaboration and industrial part, uh, participation. Mm -hmm. So I think uses of uh, VR applications in various design uh, education related fields have improved the productivity for teaching and learning, uh, teaching, training, learning, and by allowing designers to apply uh, theoretical knowledge to real industrial problems with real time experience. And that was a great uh, uh, contribution from you on the field of AR and VR. So now I think uh, we can uh, take the questions from the students if there are any. Uh, Mr. Nishidzi, are there any questions in the chat box? Uh, Professor, Dr. right now, yeah, Dr. Madhura, there are no questions right now, but if anybody has any questions right now, they can post it. Yeah, there is I one. I think there were questions, sir, yeah. I have seen. Yeah. yeah, just now we have received it. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is it possible that in future artificial intelligence, would take over some designing jobs part, which now people are doing. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, we 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 see um, different um, technologies uh, emerging so around uh, artificial intelligence, and, um, and we see that uh, these technologies are are capable to to propose. Uh, with nice references uh, are capable to, to propose interesting uh, uh, solutions or ideas. But that's not really, in fact, I say solution, but it's not really solution. I think creatively speaking, we can do really nice, uh, I mean, uh, pictures, renderings on, I don't know, future building or maybe future uh, car, I don't know. Um, I saw some really interesting results, but I, I think, the artificial intelligence can't can't replace all the uh, the intelligence you will put in around the experience of the product. Mm -hmm. um, maybe aesthetically, or I would say, yeah, aesthetically mainly. I think the the artificial intelligence will develop, will augment your capacity mm -hmm. in terms of creativity. Yeah. But only on for me, huh? only on aesthetical criteria. And all the intelligence you want to associate to the to the product, the, the service, will be uh, I think will be missing. In fact, with the artificial intelligence, so the designers um, will still have a, a big role to play, uh, even if the, the, the artificial intelligence uh, will replace maybe or. I would. I prefer to say that it will augment our, our work, and we we'll have to take that, uh, this uh, this technology as an opportunity to go maybe uh, faster or maybe a bit better or, or a bit differently also to, to make some variants to uh, to develop a uh, sort of range of products maybe really quickly or, pro or proposal maybe, but uh, not only as a as a replacement uh, of design capabilities. So. I think we, we, don't, we don't have to be afraid <laughs> of artificial. But of course, if the artificial intelligence is also um, a mean to take decisions, or uh, it will be a bit, maybe a difference, of course, because we, we saw some, uh, some, some, some examples of uh, a virtual company that, uh, that has been led by the, that, are, that are led by, uh, by artificial intelligence. Yeah, of course, it's a bit different. But uh, if we just focus on the design of the creativity, I think artificial intelligence 
such, such as uh, uh, generative design or other uh, way to 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 yeah to demultiply the the capabilities of creation uh, are just means in fact from it's not a it's not a way to to to, to replace the the design itself. Mm. Great. So the next question that the student is having is how can we introduce young children to design thinking concept? I think uh, that's a really interesting question because, in fact, we could we could consider that the young the young people, the children, in fact, are already designers in the way that to express themselves instead of the speech. In fact, they express themselves through drawings, through uh, nice creation with uh, bricks or uh, maybe with the different type of materials to express their, their, their ideas, their creativity. So in a way that the young children are already in the, in the same spirit. And maybe yes. with the maturity, we, we lose this spirit, in fact. And we, we could consider that the designers are still children, in fact, in their mind, because they, they have this ability to, um, with empathy, in fact, to, to, to think uh, instead of... Uh, 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 to, to think uh, in, the, in the same place of the user, they have to, 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 to answer uh, to, in fact. And um, it's really interesting. And I think with this uh, try, and, um, try and fail, in fact, uh, uh, method that, that, that is totally linked to the, to, the, to the design thinking approach, the children are already in, in it, in fact. And uh, I think it could be interesting um, in design schools to... Uh, uh, not not in design schools in the uh, in, in, in schools uh, in primary schools or maybe uh, kindergarten uh, um, to just to give some more uh, insights some references uh, for coming from the, the design and um, I remember the first uh, the first years of of my studies uh, uh, of design uh, we are creating some uh, some basic volumes with foam, with uh, with clay, with uh, just to to master a bit the way to uh, to express ourselves. So I think it's totally totally linked to the to the way that children express themselves. So, uh, I think we could do a bit better. I think in, uh, at school uh, really early to maybe to, to give this ability to, uh, to 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 the children to express a bit differently, and and, and I think also to improve. The way they, they think uh, later uh, uh, in, their, in the professional life or also in their study. Yes, I agree with Sebastian because we all are very creative at our, at our younger age. So uh, young students are always creative and they are good in design thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Nitish, are so, there any other questions? Yeah, there is uh, one or two more questions. Uh, so maybe if it is all right, we can take one or two more questions. Okay. Um, uh, one participant is asking, how does artificial intelligence helps for graphic designers and the graphic industry? So would you like to emphasize on any of this? Uh, oh, the, the design can help. Uh, uh... I don't uh, really um, heard the, the, the beginning of the question, in fact. Right, sure. So how does artificial intelligence helps for graphic designers in the graphic industry? Okay. Um, maybe you go on to answer also. Maybe. <laughs> that, that's a good question because for me, artificial intelligence is gathering many information. You, you feed basically a kind of robot uh, and it will try to... Um, a gather kind of uh, average from all this information and try to go further as your own uh, thinking. The thing is, even if you will provide um, new design, new graphics, um, maybe new solutions, but at the end, um, when you uh, you design something, that's 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 one thing. When you are facing a graphics or a design, you have an emotion. You feel something special when you see it. All uh, can uh, uh, artificial intelligence can define the emotion us human beings we have. It can provide a thousand of solutions. At the end, all can he say that a targeted group, 100 people 
how many of these 100 people will react to this design? Nobody is reacting the same way. And I'm very, I would be, I would be surprised that if we provide um, uh, something, uh, graphics from uh, artificial intelligence, how to be sure that all this group will reach, will go straight to these graphics. I guess that at the end, nobody will react the same way. And uh, artificial intelligence will provide so much final uh, graphics or design or product or services. If you don't have a lot of people going straight into one of the results, yes. how can you sell it? Honestly, um, it's human emotion at the end. Uh, and I'm not sure that artificial intelligence can really, really define our future emotion. Simply. Yeah. And, and uh, I totally agree with, uh, with you, in fact. And, and I and not just see the, the, inter, the artificial intelligence as, as a mean to, to think a bit differently or maybe to, to make mm -hmm. a, just a step uh, aside, in fact. Uh, because it's, as Hugo said, in fact, it really depends on the source. In fact, the artificial intelligence, if there is no interesting uh, uh, source, in fact, uh, of inspiration for this, uh, for, for this algorithm, in fact, there is nothing. So, of course, you can do really nice uh, pictures at the end, but if your source are not really good, you, you won't have a really nice result. So, mm. I think we will take the opportunity to maybe to exchange with this uh, this this algorithm, this uh, artificial intelligence. It's also sort of deep learning. So the more we we the more we we feed the the, the, the system, the, the more uh, the more the, the quality will be uh, will be there. So I think it will be a sort of a ping pong, in fact, uh, between yeah. the, 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 cre the creator and the, and the artificial intelligence. We have to, to think about that, in fact, and not really yeah. considering that it will replace uh, our, our work. Yeah, I also agree with both of you. I think uh, artificial intelligence can help uh, des graphic designers particularly to know the interesting styles and colors of the users. And that will improve them to, uh, sorry, that will help them to improve their artwork, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, there are a lot of questions. So I would request participants to kindly, you know, send it their questions on an email, and we will get it addressed by Mr. Sebastian and Mr. Ugo as well. Okay. Uh, Dr. Madhura Yadav, anything which you would like to um, conclude, and then afterwards, I would like to just uh, yeah, yeah. So thank you, Sebastian and Mr. Ugo. And we have covered, I think, uh, on design thinking, how design thinking create a better future and we are making life better for the society with the help of sympathy. Uh, like designers should have empathy and spirit. And then we have also covered on design as a profession and how it changed, how technology speed, then quality cost had changed the design profession. And then you have uh, shared the experiences, 3D environment experiences by showing us the mask uh, design from your office and the experimentation you have done. And then lastly, we have discussed about uh, the role of AR and VR in uh, uh, design education. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this talk was very, uh, this discussion was very wonderful and I, I think it will be useful for the students as well as faculty. And I see this is the future of design education and all should learn AR and VR and how we can become a better designer for using this technology. And nowadays I have heard and I somewhere I read that even this technology is also helping uh, allow us to, if some existing books are there, so through the help of this technology, we can uh, use the AR in printed book pages and then the textbook will also become dynamic source of information. So in this way, uh, we can have a rich interactive experience with uh, comparatively less computer knowledge than computer experts. So this is the future of design education, AR and VR. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> yes. So f thank you for the, okay. the thanks again for the invitation. It was really nice yeah. to speak uh, with you, and also for the interesting question at the end. It was really uh, really interesting to. Um, Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ugo Barbalata, Mr. Sebastian Smithrens, and Dr. Madhura Yadav for such an interactive and yes, indeed an insightful session. I am sure that, you know, as Dr. Madhura Yadav mentioned that this uh, conversation is definitely going to help the students as well as the faculties to have a little different approach in terms of design thinking and uh, to take this uh, all forward in a much better and a stronger way. Thank you everybody for being a part of this design talk series. We look forward for your presence in our next session, which is scheduled in the month of December next month. Till then, stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you. See you, bye. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.